the most hated man in the world, Bruno Richard Hauptmann. He was born on November 26, 1899 in Cummins, a town near Dresden in the Kingdom of Saxony, which was a state of the German Empire. He was the youngest of five children. Neither he nor his family or friends used the name Bruno, although prosecutors in the Lindbergh kidnapping trial referred to him by that name. He had three brothers and a sister. At age 11, he joined the Boy Scouts. Hauptmann attended public school during the day, while attending trade school at night, studying carpentry for the first year, then switching to machine building for the next two years. Hauptmann's father died in 1917. During that same year, Hauptmann learned that his brother, Hermann, had been killed fighting in France in World War I. Not long after that, he was informed that another brother, Max, had also been killed while fighting in Russia. Shortly thereafter, Hauptmann was conscripted and assigned to the artillery. Upon receiving his orders, he was sent to Bautzen, but was transferred to the 103rd Infantry Replacement Regiment upon his arrival. In 1918, Hauptmann was assigned to the 12th Machine Gun Company at Konigsbruck. Hauptmann later claimed he was deployed to Western France with the 177th Regiment of Machine Gunners in either August or September 1918 then fought in the Battle of St. Mihiel, that he was gassed in September or October 1918, and that he was struck in a helmet by shrapnel from shelling, knocking him out so that he was left for dead. When he came to, he crawled back to safety and was back on duty that evening. After the war, Hauptmann and a friend robbed two women wheeling baby carriages they were using to transport food on the road between Wiese and Nibelschutz. The friend wielded Hauptmann's army pistol during the commission of this crime. Hauptmann's other charges include burglarizing a mayor's house with the use of a ladder. Released after three years in prison. He was arrested three months later on suspicion of additional burglaries. Hauptmann illegally entered the United States by stowing away on an ocean liner. Landing in New York City in November 1923, the 24-year-old Hauptmann was taken in by a member of the established German community and worked as a carpenter. He married a German waitress, Anna Schoeffler in 1925 and became a father eight years later. Hauptmann was described as being slim and of medium height, but broad-shouldered. His eyes were small and deep-set. On the evening of March 1, 1932, Charles Lindbergh Jr., son of aviator Charles Lindbergh, was kidnapped from Highfields, New Jersey. A homemade ladder was found under the window of the child's room. The $50,000 demanded in a ransom note had been delivered by Dr. John F. Condon, but the infant's body was found on May 12 in woods four miles from the family's home. The death was ascribed to a blow to the head, which some have theorized occurred accidentally during the abduction. On September 15, 1934, a bank teller realized that the serial number on a $10 gold certificate deposited by a gas station was on the list of Lindbergh ransom bills. On the bill's margin, the attendant had written the license plate number of the customer's car, which turned out to be Hauptmann's. Hauptmann was placed under surveillance by the New York City Police Department, New Jersey State Police, and the FBI. On September 19, Hauptmann realized he was being watched and attempted to escape, speeding and running through red lights. 
He was captured after finding himself blocked by a truck on Park Avenue just north of Tremont Avenue in the Bronx. On the morning of September 19, 1934, the team followed Hauptmann as he left his apartment on Needham Avenue and East 222nd Street in the Bronx, but were quickly noticed. As a result, Hauptmann attempted to get away by ignoring red lights and traveling at high speed. As the chase continued, Hauptmann was accidentally boxed in by a municipal sprinkler truck between 178th Street and East Tremont Avenue. Hauptmann was placed in handcuffs. The trial attracted widespread media attention and was dubbed the trial of the century. Hauptmann was also named the most hated man in the world. The trial was held in Flemington, New Jersey and ran from January 2nd to February 13th, 1935. Cole Henry S. Breckenridge was Lindbergh's lawyer throughout the case and had acted as an intermediary in the ransom negotiations, assisted by Robert H. Thayer. On discovering his child was missing, Lindbergh had phoned Breckenridge before calling the state police. Evidence produced against Hauptmann included $14,590 of the ransom money found in his garage and testimony alleging handwriting and spelling similarities to that found on the ransom notes. Eight different handwriting experts Albert S. Osborne, L. Breach W. Stein, John F. Tyrell, Herbert J. Walter, Harry M. Cassidy, Wilmer T. Souder, Albert D. Osborne, and Clark Sellers were called by the prosecution to the witness stand, where they pointed out similarities between words and letters in the ransom notes and in Hauptmann's writing specimens which included documents written before he was arrested, such as automobile registration applications. Hauptmann was convicted and immediately sentenced to death by Judge Trenkard, who set the date for the week of March 18, 1935. The Hauptmann defense appealed to the New Jersey Court of Errors and Appeals which, as a result, delayed the execution. The appeal was then argued on June 29, 1935. New Jersey Governor Harold G. Hoffman secretly visited Hauptmann in his death row cell on the evening of October 16, 1935, with Adam Adding, a stenographer and fluent speaker of German. Hoffman urged members of the New Jersey Court of Errors and Appeals, then the state's highest court, to visit Hauptmann. In late January 1936, while clearly stating he held no position on the guilt or innocence of Hauptmann, Governor Hoffman cited evidence the crime was not a one-person job. He then directed Cole Schwarzkopf to continue a thorough and impartial investigation into the kidnapping in an effort to bring all parties involved to justice. As time was quickly running out for Hauptmann, it became known among the press that on March 27, Governor Hoffman was considering a second reprieve of his death sentence, but was actively seeking advice concerning the legality of his right as governor to do so. On March 30, 1936, Hauptmann's second and final application asking for clemency from the New Jersey Board of Pardons was denied. The governor would later announce this decision would be the final legal action in this case, and that he would not grant another reprieve. However, a postponement in the execution would occur once again when the Mercer County Grand Jury, investigating the confession and arrest of Paul Wendell, requested Warden Mark Kimberling for a delay. This final stay would come to an end when the Mercer County prosecutor informed Kimberling the grand jury had adjourned after voting to discontinue its investigation concerning Wendell without any 
complaint charging him with murder. On April 3, 1936, Hauptmann was executed in Old Smokey, the electric chair at the New Jersey State Prison. Hauptmann's last meal consisted of coffee, milk, celery, olives, salmon salad, corn fritters, sliced cheese, fruit salad, and cake. Reporters present at the execution reported that he went to the electric chair without saying a word. He had addressed his last words to his spiritual advisor, Reverend James Matheson, minutes prior to being taken from his cell to the death chamber. He reportedly said, Ich bin absolut in Schutt again Denver Brechen, die man mir zur last lecht, which Matheson told Governor Hoffman meant, I am absolutely innocent of the crime with which I am burdened. After the execution, Hauptmann's widow applied for and received the special permission that was required to take her husband's body out of state, so that it could be cremated at the U.S. crematory, also called the Fresh Pond Crematory, in the Maspeth neighborhood of Queens, New York. The memorial service there was religious Lutheran pastors conducted the service in German and private under New Jersey law. Public services were not permitted for felons, and Anna Hauptmann had agreed to this as a condition of receiving her husband's body and was attended by only six people, but a crowd of over 2,000 gathered outside. Thank you for watching Death Row. Today's video is sponsored by Nobility.co.uk the leading company in selling legal titles in the United Kingdom. Get a 10% discount in any purchase, by mentioning Death Row. Here in the UK, there are two types of titles. Firstly, there are peerages, which are granted by the Queen. These are not allowed to be sold. Secondly, there are manorial feudal titles. Uh, these were once based on land ownership. Uh, however, since 1925, titles have been separate from the land itself with the introduction of the Law of Property Act 1925. Here is the UK government website showing what titles are legal. Manorial feudal titles are regarded as inheritable property, which any nationality worldwide can Purchase. Companies selling seated titles or titles with tiny plots of land whilst sounding good are in fact by law novelty souvenirs, not real genuine titles. Legally approved by UK trading standards, barristers and a UK law lord, no other company has a law lord ruling, 100% legal and proper. You can add your title to passports, bank cards, etc. Even American and Canadian citizens can add the title to their passports on the observation page. All UK and foreign titles have passed 12 legal security checks before offering them for sale. Buy with confidence from the number one title broker in the world, established 1996. Compliant with Privacy Data Protection Act 2018, the Honours Prevention and Abuses Act and Law of Property Act 1925 all processed through UK solicitors, strictly private and confidential.